this is it. After months of hard work, I finally saved enough for the ultimate development machine. Follow me on this journey. Together we will... Alright, let's end this once and for all. Can you code on an iPad in 2020? In this video, I will try to develop and deploy a full web application using an iPad only in four hours. Wish me luck because this is probably gonna be terrible. Let's start my friends. What's up family, my name is Raf. Welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna do something interesting. I'm gonna try to create a web application in four hours using an iPad only. So this is gonna be interesting. So the rules for this challenge are simple. I can use only an iPad with accompanying accessories and I have four hours to develop and deploy this so that it is accessible by a public domain. At the end of the video, I will give a conclusion and go over my thoughts about the whole process and if I can even recommend it to anyone if you need a fast and quick uh, portable development environment. So, my weapon of choice for this challenge, this tiny little fellow. Bought this around one year ago. Uh, it's an entry-level iPad 2018. Came in at around 300 bucks, I guess. I do, however, want to make this a realistic challenge. So, I'm gonna use some extra tools to really create the most ideal and most comfortable uh, dev environment on an iPad that's possible. So, I'm including two hardware upgrades. The first one being this, a Logitech Bluetooth keyboard. This will allow me to actually write some uh, proper lines of code in a normal way. Because let's be honest, if anyone wants to use an iPad as their portable dev environment, uh, chances are likely extremely high that they will get an external keyboard because yeah, without that it will ju just be a torture and you cannot get any work done. So this keyboard comes in at around $70 I think and it's actually quite a nice keyboard. Um, the keys are, have a really really good travel and the overall weight of the accessories is almost uh, nothing. It's very light so really recommend this keyboard. And the second hardware upgrade is this, the Apple Pencil. So this is the first gen Apple Pencil because this is the older iPad so the newer Apple Pencil doesn't work with this. Um, yeah, probably this is not even going to be useful for me. I don't think I'm even going to use it but the reason I want to include this is because the case has a very nice pencil holder. So yeah, I care about aesthetics, don't blame me. So with these two awesome accessories I'm sure as hell going to be super super productive. All right, so we have the hardware part fixed. Now on to the next hurdle and that's gonna be the software. You're probably wondering now, yeah, how the hell are you gonna do that? Yeah, I was thinking the same because yeah, an iPad, it's running on iPad OS and that's like completely locked. This is the Apple ecosystem. You don't have a terminal, you don't have root access. You can't do anything. You cannot install anything on it. So we really have to find a solution for that to make this even possible. Let me introduce you this beauty. CodeServer is an application which basically lets you run VS Code in a browser. So that's really super awesome, right? Because you can basically just fire up a, a Linux machine like a VPS and then um, install a CodeServer on that and then just access your uh, browser on your portable device and you you are in VS Code then that's awesome right and the beauty of it is you use that uh, cloud machine for the resources and for the computing and these kind of things so nothing like that happens on your own device so you even save like battery uh, you don't have high CPU usage you don't have high memory uses because like the hard work is done on the cloud uh, machine right this will also make it possible for us to uh, install databases on there so for our development and yeah install for example Python uh, libraries whatever so this really gives us the full power of a Linux machine but then 
accessed through the browser. All right, then the second software tool that I use is Termius. This is basically uh, an SSH client for like mobile devices. So you can use it on your mobile, your iPads, whatever. It's just basically, uh, yeah, it gives you a terminal, especially for stuff like server configuration and yeah, server setup, these kind of things, uh, like a full SSH client, like, um, like Termius, for example, works for me better than just that terminal inside VS Code. All right, so we got our hardware going, we got our software going, and now all that's left? Yeah, exactly. What are we going to build? I thought about this for a while and um, I wanted to do something for the uh, dev community or something useful for uh, aspiring developers. So I came up with this ID, which will be kind of like a, a resume website where developers can sign up, fill in their details and then uh, yeah, they have some sort of resume that uh, gets displayed on the webs, which they can access very easily. And then the nice thing, what you can do with that domain, for example, is you're gonna, uh, if you're gonna visit a profile, for example, check this dot dev and then slash rough. So check this dev rough, and then you'll land on the profile page of me with my resume there. So that looked, seemed kind of cool to me. Now maybe on the home page, something like a search form or something so that you can quickly find someone and see what his uh, social media profiles are, his LinkedIn, his GitHub, uh, his Twitter, this kind of things. So yeah, it's not the greatest idea. I haven't really given it that much thought because yeah, I also only have four hours, so it's gonna be tough anyway, but uh, yeah, I, I think I can do it. At least uh, manage to make something <laughs> remotely what looks like that. So yeah, I, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do my best. Uh, after that, I'm gonna put it up on GitHub. So if you wanna collaborate, just uh, throw me some PRs and I'm sure they'll come accept them. All right, so before we set the timer and we start this challenge, I already did some pre-configuration of the server and uh, yeah, just basically setting up this code server uh, software. It really took me quite some time. It, I think it took me like five hours to set everything up. Um, yeah, I wanted to do that beforehand so that in this four hours that I'm uh, developing, everything is already set up and I don't have to worry about that. Then it will just be me uh, coding only, so really uh, spend my time useful for that. Because otherwise, yeah, the setup took a really long time, so that's why I'm doing it like this. So the setup is already done now, and yeah, now it's just onto the, the core of this video, which is programming this in four hours. So let's start and wish me luck. four hours later and a lot of pain and headaches it's finally here let's see find your favorite death all right so the four hours is over this is what i could fabricate from it in this four hours um, i have to tell you the experience was absolutely terrible i cannot recommend this to anyone just don't it's horrible all right, so the four hours is over. Let's see what I have fabricated. Well, as you can see here, it's just a basic uh, bootstrap uh, boilerplate code. I mean, more than that, I really could not do. Um, yeah, you have at least a search function. So let's search for Rav. Boom, there I am. It's together with John Doe. Click me. Yeah, then you have like a detail page. Um, yeah, with my Twitter link. So these are like uh, database driven, uh, this is all database driven data. And then I have my profile, I can update it, change my email, sign out. You have signed out, yeah. So yeah, this really, this is kind of sad, but this is all I could make from it in that time because uh, developing on an iPad, I really don't recommend. All right, so let's jump to the conclusion. Do I recommend uh, developing on iPad? 
absolutely nuts. This was just a horrible experience. It's doable, but it's so counterintuitive and not productive at all. I mean, you, you, you don't have hot reload. You cannot debug because you don't have Chrome tools. Uh, opening multiple tabs for Stack Overflow or GitHub is just horrible because the screen is so small. I really wouldn't recommend it at all. However, if you just have to quickly edit something or quickly fix something, um, yeah, then it's nice, but not for main development. It's not made for that. At least that was my experience. Maybe someone else experienced it different, but I prefer my 34-inch uh, wide monitor. All right, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed. I really didn't. Yeah, I enjoyed making the video, but coding on an iPad was horrible. Just don't do it. I don't recommend it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give this a like. Um, leave a comment if you want. And yeah, subscribe if you want to see more. And I hope to see you next time. Ciao.